Okay, so tonight uh, I'm going to start with talking about carving a head and bill on a buffalo head working decoy. Um, this is part of the project we're working on with the cedar project. And, um, and um, first of all, the, the head, I'm going to explain, next month I'll talk about the body and, and how these kind of things come together. I decided to do a tucked head um, just because I think they're a little more challenging and um, like right now that the head isn't sitting into the body like it should so next month I'll go over how I get that head inserted into the body um, that way you can see how that's done but one one thing about the pattern here in this head so I have my pattern I drew it up now I, I got the, the joint line right here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. The, what I do is I, I draw this line and, and that line is parallel to the bottom of the decoy. That way if you ever want to turn your head in any direction, your bill is going to be um, level or in plane with what you want. Um, if you're like say, put this in at an angle of some sort, and then you cut your head at an angle, then you're pretty much stuck with a straight on bird or uh, a lifetime of struggles to try to get that, if you want to turn it, to get it to look right. So um, the main thing is, is try to keep this, this uh, joint line parallel with the bottom. That way when you cut your head out, you can turn it any way you want and uh, everything will be level for you. Any questions on that? So that's what I've, I've got going here. Even though right now you can see it doesn't work out, I have a big gap there. But next month I'll show you how to recess that into the body. Okay? So tonight we'll focus on the head. Now some of you have seen my method of cutting out a head and some of you may have not. Um, I have patterns up here. You're all welcome to these. Take one or two. Um, I, I draw my patterns for my heads. I draw a top view. Top view. Front view. And the side view. So I have three patterns for the head. And I, I, I try to get as much wood removed in the, the bandsaw process. So with the three patterns I can when I'm all done cutting it out of the bandsaw, I pretty much have all the shapes I need in there now. It's just a matter of rounding it off. It saves me a lot of time. Um, the one thing though is safety. Make sure your bandsaw blade is in good working order and, and sharp and be aware all times when you're running your fingers through the bandsaw. And that you don't want to run your fingers through a bandsaw. Don't do it. Don't do it. No. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I hope you weren't cutting out your head on this method. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, kind of how I lay it out, this is kind of a crude drawing here. Um, so number one is I have a, a block of wood. And my block of wood isn't much bigger than the head itself. And um, the other thing, the key to this success is make sure the block is square. That you want to make sure it's square and then the one end is flat, so when you have it turned in on, on its end, it's flat, and so it's not going to rock in your bandsaw. So number one is I draw the, a center line down the top and down the front. Um, draw your top pattern on the top of the block. The front elevation on the front of the block. And then your side pattern on the side. Um, and then if you have a drill press, I usually put the eye hole that's kind of the center of the eye and then run that through the drill press and then that goes all the way through and then when you cut it out, you're, you have a pretty good idea of where your eye placement's going to be. Um, and again, when you're drawing your patterns, 
you want to make sure everything kind of lines up. So say, for example, the top pattern, you want that, the width of the top pattern to line up with the width of the front pattern. The length of the top, you want it to line up with the length of the side. So that way when you line it all up on your block of wood, when you're lining up on your block of wood, make sure front is front, back is back, top is lined up, and so on and so forth. Because if you don't, and when you cut it out, you, it's not going to look right, and then you're starting off on the wrong foot. So, so make sure you got everything lined up the way you want it. Double check. So step number two then is to start the cutting out process on the bandsaw. So I cut out the top first. So I'll come in on the back side, let's say, go in, stop, make a stop cut, back out. Go on the other side, come in, stop, back out. Come in from the front, do the same thing, stop, back out. The other side, in, stop, back out. So when you're done with that, you still have a block form. So nothing's gonna rock in your bandsaw. Step three is turn the block on end and cut out um, the front elevation or front face. So come in from the top, work your way down to the cheeks, but stop, don't go out, back out, do the other side, in, stop, back out, you're still in block form. Now step four, which is the final step, cut out the head. Just come in and cut out the whole head the way it is. And then when you're done with that, you'll be able to just peel the peel the pieces of wood away and you, with your fingers and you end up with this. So just the way I do it, it's not the right way, but it's just a way. I save a lot of time doing it this way. Um, so any questions on that? <coughs> so, okay. So the, the next step for me is to, I, with my heads, I always start with the bills. For me, the bills are the hardest thing to do. And if I'm gonna screw the bill up, it's easy for me just to start over versus spending all the time on the head, just rounding it off and then get to the bill and mess it up. And then you kind of feel, well, I got that much time into it. I'm just gonna keep going. So I always start with the bills first. So I, I use this eye hole here to kind of lay out my bill with my pattern. I've got this tracing base paper with my bill on it. I'm going to take it. The nice part about this tracing paper, right now the lead is on this side of the paper, so I'm going to start on this side of the bill. Kind of get my eye figured out there, get it on there where it's laid out like this and then trace that on there it's kind of hard to do with that place I'm going to run it this way for a little bit one thing I should mention uh, when cutting out the head I usually leave extra wood on the bill. So you can see I left extra wood on the top, a little bit on the bottom. So I do that just so you have some wiggle room. Now I'll go to the other side. Now this tracing paper has lead on the other side, so I can, it'll transfer that lead onto the, the block of wood.
then I look at it from face on and make sure I got it lined up properly. It's kind of drawn in both sides of the same. And then I just kind of carve that excess wood around there to get it down to that mark. So I'll go with a knife here and just I'm removing wood. This is white cedar, so when you're carving with white cedar, you need to make sure you're going with the grain, not against it, otherwise you'll chip it out. So I've kind of carved it down to the wood, or down to the line now, on the top. So when I'm done with that, then I'll draw, draw a center line down it. I have a center line down the head, all the way around. And you really shouldn't be taking that center line off now unless you want to change the profile of the head or the bill. So the only that if you are taking it off, then you're altering the, the shape of your head. So unless you're doing it intentionally, don't do it. So, so now I got the center line in, got the bill drawn on. Um, and then I, I usually use, I use a study bill. I, I have an open mouth one here, and this isn't going to be an open mouth carving. I, I thought I had a buffalo head bill, and I don't. But, but we'll use, I'll use, be able to use this for what we're doing here this evening. So, so I'll take, get this shape here, this, this rounded shape here. So I'll just take that to a piece of paper, transfer that on. Like so, that shows up. Yeah, there you go. And then I'll transfer that on to to the wood. See that. Uh, Draw that on there, and I'll carve away that. rounded shape now on the top view. And then we got the side view. The top and side. So now we'll want to get this part figured out here, the, the top of the bill. So I'll take a little divider with my study bill and just measure on the wide side of it. There. And then I'll transfer that measurement on to the wood. I'm just eyeballing the center of that, like so. So I got two little marks there right now. I'll just extend those up a little bit, like that. And then we have this part here. So we need to bring this in to those lines. So. Um, <coughs> Can be done with power or or knives. Tonight I'm going to use power just for speed. I'm going to use a little flame um, bit diamond. And come in here like this.
I'm trying to go back and forth on each side. Kind of dug into the sides to get to that to these lines here, and to see if you're equal on both sides, I always put a pencil line in there. Just draw it in where the crevice is, where the diamond was, and by looking at it straight on, you can usually see if you're off. So maybe one side you're in farther than the other. <laughs> by putting that pencil line in there. It really helps you see if you've gone in farther on one side or the other and then you just make your adjustment. So I think we're pretty close here um, to where we need to be um, for that measurement where that's coming into the head. Um, yep, yeah. pass it around. Sure. There you go. Any questions on anything so far? Um, I got a quick question. If you, yep. if you make it 10% bigger, yep. are you fudging that when you do that? Yeah, if you make like this, uh, Bob just asked if um, you make your decoy 10% bigger, you should yeah, fudge with your study bill. Just kind of, it's kind of a guess at that point. You can't, if you make it this size, it's going to be too small. So I am, by doing this measurement on the outside of it, like I'm naturally getting more width. So. I'm going to get the dimension now between the, the, the base of the V and the top. Actually, I'm going to go tip of the bill to the inside of that V. That's going to be easier. I'm just going to mark it there a little bit. And just draw. <coughs> draw a V in there. I'm going to take that same bit and dig take that out of there.
don't know if that caught it pretty good or not, but um, so now you kind of have that top of the head coming into the bill there. Again, you take your pencil and draw that. Kind of look at it from the front. Not too bad for for quick demonstration. So. Now we're going to get this the bottom of the the bill and the head dimension. So I'm going to take the my dividers again, kind of measure out. I'm on the outside of it again, so I'm going to come in here and draw that line in here. So you can kind of see the bottom of the bill I've got drawn on and I'm going to take a cylinder diamond just a flat cylinder and uh, in the grinder come in up to the head here we'll come in on the bottom Kind of make an S curve there and just subtly blend it. That show up. Okay. And when I so when I came out at the bottom here, I'm with on that line. Do the other side. Now we kind of have the, the base or the width of the bill determined there. So now you can either use grinder or, or a knife to stick that in there and carve that out of there. Now you kind of got your bill size figured out. Okay. So now I'm just going to take my knife and um, make a quick finish of a working bill. <laughs> I'll show you something on that to make it. That's a pretty close fill, pretty quick. Okay. Um, someone just brought up, Lou just brought up the nail. So what I do for a quick and easy nail, I, uh, I make it do a little drawing like this. I don't know if you can see it. Does that show up on the camera? Um, so you can kind of see that it's very subtle. Okay, I'll just take this, take this diamond or go back to the flame, the shape one, and and just kind of carve that out just a little bit, just blend it in.
So the, from the front, it looks like you have a nail on there, but it's still pretty, pretty sturdy and there's a lot of meat there, but it just gives it a little added shape. It also, from the side profile, kind of brings that bill up and shows a nail in there a little bit. So for a working decoy, only one other thing I would do is just um, carve in a little separation between the upper and lower mandible. Draw a pencil line in, in there like that, right at the bottom. And then we'll go back to this flame and uh, just remove some wood. Both sides. And that's pretty much it for a working bill. I would do. Any questions on that? Okay. So the rough out of the head do the same on both sides. I'm, tonight I'm just going to do one side so I can get to the eye channel. So now I'm just basically rounding off Maybe this power or with knives. White sea, you have to be careful. I used to carve in Tupelo lately. I've been using is uh, it's made by Knott's knives and has a little curve to it. I really like like uh, chip carving with that on the heads. Knott's knives is out of Maryland. It's where we've been buying our white cedar from for the club project. Kind of got a uh, basic shape going there with the rounding. Um, so now I'm going to finish off the eye channel or get it started anyway and finishing in up to the bill and finishing up through, through the crown. Um, so what I do for that is I, I kind of draw an S shape in here. I got that hole where I drilled the hole for the eye. I draw, coming out the top of the hole, kind of a curve like that. It's 
Then on the back side of the eye, on the bottom of the hole, I come in and draw from the bottom side of the hole, kind of an opposite direction. So you kind of end up with a S curve through there. Okay. What that's going to do is leave some wood behind the eye, and you're kind of making, creating a channel through the front of the eye so the bird can see. Um, for that, I'm going to use uh, that diamond flame again. When you're using these, make sure they're in a little ways and they're not way out. Um, if they're out and you put too much force on there, you can bend these pretty easily and you end up, could hurt yourself. Done. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to come in here with this flame and I put it in that eye hole and come back like so. When I'm usually doing this, I'm making sure I'm doing both sides at the same time. So you're kind of working back and forth so you get the same depths. Um, and you get the feel. Then I'm going to come into the front or the top. So my deepest part is at the eye. And if you notice, I'm deeper there, higher, and then it's going to come back down to the bill this way here. So it's not just a straight line through there. So I'm gonna have curvature from the eye over, it's gonna roll up and over to the bill. So it's not just a straight. Or we should pass it around from here. The same thing here, I'm deep there, high here, you know, and it's, by the way, I'm creating a cheek a little bit. Let's pass that around so you can kind of see the bill and, and all the eye channels working. Same procedure on a mallard head? Yeah. Yeah. Canvas back. Canvas back. Yeah, they're all, like the canvas back, their bill kind of comes out. They don't have much of a forehead. It kind of comes straight down. So. But yeah, you could do this similar on all of them. I, I do. Um, doing that this way, you end up with a nice full head and, and so. Any questions on that so far? I'm going to switch to a it's kind of a stump cutter <coughs> flame shape, just a little more aggressive. Um, the diamonds remove the wood nice and clean and a little slower than this, so you just have to be careful using one of these and remove wood very fast. kind of tapered, kind of a flame shape. I think I got that at James Company, J-A-Y-M-E-S. They have an online, online catalog.
Okay. So I'm just gonna kind of round things off now. If I need to go deeper, I can later, but for now I'm just gonna round things off on the bottom side and then the top side. And then, uh, like I said, if you need to make it deeper, you can. Coming in here, bottom. Yeah, I'm just kind of blending and rounding. There's the bottom side. And then into the bill. I'll finish this in a little bit. So I'll get the top. Browning things off a little better in the back. I'm working. On the heads and bodies too, I'm, if I'm doing this grinding, I'm kind of looking at planes like this and you can kind of see where flat spots are. And then with your bit, you can kind of work it around and see it and then kind of round things off. I'm always kind of looking at, at it this way and then as you turn it, you can kind of see if you're getting it round or if you have a flat spot somewhere. It's not perfect, but it's getting there. Um, you could. Yeah, it's almost round enough now to where you can almost, you know, all this is getting pretty close for a working decoy for sure. Okay. So now we'll finish up this little bit here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go in with the same bit. Uh, and come in at an angle like that. Make a little smiley in there. Round it that way. And then take this down. Be careful not to take out your lower mandible.
kind of a quick demonstration of carving a head and bill. Any questions? <coughs> when you do the eye hole, you got eye socket. You got to go out of that bit you got from James and. Um, I just use one of these cylinder, oh, okay. cylinder bits. I mean, that could be a program in itself, the eyes. It, you know, if we want to do that, I'll be more than happy to do it. So, so but. Uh, um, well, I just asked Ed. Ed said he'd do professional type eyes on okay. January. Sounds good. Eyelids and that type of stuff. Perfect. Okay. So next month we'll do the body. I'll show the, the, the how to attach the head to the body and get it to sit flat in there. And then we'll uh, carve the body real quick. <laughs> You handed out the patterns before, didn't you? Yeah, these are the same ones. If anyone lost it or needs one or haven't gotten one, help yourself. <coughs> okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.